flavored. It's rare whiskey day. Rare whiskey day. Whiskey you're probably never gonna get to try because distribution is so narrow. Now once a week we do this thing called rare whiskey day. Rare whiskey day are basically more, more often than not these smaller brands that don't have tremendous amounts of distribution. Uh, don't really have enough of uh, an audience or a market to do an episode in and of themselves, but we're gonna go through a bunch of these back to back, give our first impressions. If you are lucky enough to have uh, one of these whiskeys, uh, whiskeys within arm's reach, hopefully we find something amazing for you. If not, keep watching anyway because it helps the analytics of the channel and it's really all about me at the end of the day. He wasn't listening at all. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't hear anything you just said. Just... Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> this is Cotton Hollow, which I've seen for a while. They. Dark, are a company that is, uh, they call themselves distilling, but I don't think they're actually distilling. Really? They're sourcing, tracking down and sourcing interesting bottles or interesting whiskey from other states. They're telling you where it's coming from. Oh, lovely. And then they're releasing it in single batches. So this one is their first Texas release. Okay. Actually distilled in Texas. Okay. And then uh, four years old. Yeah. Now I'm guessing this is either going to be Gulf or Bone. Is probably the source of this, but it doesn't say anywhere on the bottle where it's actually coming from. Surprisingly dark. Pot still. Oh, lovely. Okay. Corn and rye. Okay, okay. okay. Oklahoma rye, actually. Oklahoma rye. Who do we got? Who's yeah. that? Do we got the Danny Zink? Danny Zink, you magnificent bastard. So they're based in Bardstown, Kentucky. Their first release, I think, was a Kentucky bourbon. Oh, okay. I was about to say, if you're based in Kentucky and you don't source a Kentucky... Yeah, they do. Okay, all right, all right. Um, Darren Lincoln. But that, uh, yeah, it, the, the they, relatively young age to get that much color. Right. Like, yeah, that's Texas. That, <laughs> welcome to Texas. <laughs> this smells... Uh, uh, molasses and woody. Yeah, but there's something else in there. It's almost... Um, I'm talking about that lighter, sweeter element. Yeah, it's almost like a sickly sweet. Yeah, you know what well, I mean? But but it's floating on top, like that hefty dark molasses is the... Yeah, but it's... It reminds me of the slight funk at the end of a distillation run when we're cleaning out the stills and you get that vegetal funk in the air. Let me tell you this, Daniel. And this is going to blow everybody's mind. I've never cleaned a still. You've walked into the distillery when Deb was rinsing out a tank no, that's and gone, oh, that smell. What is that? Oh, that's the end of the run. Uh, it's more of like a phenolic, like a bready phenolic type. No, thing. but there's a hint of that that's almost sour. Not quite sour, but almost sour note right in the middle of this thing. I'm and say, it's reminding me of something that I can't pinpoint. I'm going to say a... Uh, God, I can't decide if that's more of a caramel or vanilla sweet, sitting on top of this really astringent dark molasses. Like, astringent as oh. in kind of like a bitter dark molasses. Whoa! That is so woody. Mm-hmm. Did you taste it yet? I am now. That is so woody it almost tastes mis smoked. Mesquite smoked. <laughs> I just gotta walk it off, man. Walk it off. The wood! I don't know if I'm running towards it or from uh, yeah. it. I don't know if I'm running towards <laughs> it or from it. I can't tell where I am. <laughs> hey, stop, drop, and roll, baby. When the smoke fills your eyes, you got to get below the smoke level. But, but <laughs> to finish on this, it's very sweet. Man, this is like, this is like if you removed all of the flavor from brimstone and turned the smokiness down by half. Okay, all, of, I mean? all of flavor. That's remove uh, all the molasses out of it. Okay. No, I'm saying there is molasses. No, there is, but not to the level of Balcona's molasses. Right, right. A thinner molasses, and then half the smoke. But it, I mean, you would swear okay. that this was a smoked whiskey. Okay. Shut your face. Think about the finish. I'm going to say these words right now. That finish. This is probably the first time I've ever had. What I have come, come to fully know and expect from a Texas whiskey. They're like the molasses and the wood. But the finish, that's a Canadian finish. What? The vanilla, buttery, the caramel, that is a Canadian finish what? after this wild, Where are you getting this wild, and caramel woody adventure. I'm not buying it. Wild, woody adventure finishing with a, with a, with a Canadian. I'm gonna add a little water and see if I can find what you're finding. Yeah. The, to me, this feels like someone said this is what Texas whiskey tastes like, and so they bottled it. You know what I mean? So, on the very, 
Wow, I'm finding like a nuttiness now. Just right on the front in there. Add a little water and it gets more walnut. Yeah, like a sugared walnut. This is batch three, by the way. So if you can't tell, this is an interesting whiskey. Daniel, holy crap, this is a rare whiskey day. We're not doing reviews. It's, oh yeah, yeah, it's better, um, oh, it's 57.5%. Yeah, it's, it's damn It's better with water, okay. just so you know. Now, good on them for releasing good cask strength. Good on them. Dramatic, interesting whiskey. For holding our attention whenever we should have been moving on a long time ago. Yeah, it's, it's a flavor journey, to be <laughs> sure. It's not boring. This is a cask strength New Zealand from Anthony... Garo. Another dark whiskey. Yeah, well, remember the stuff. Okay, so Anthony Garo. All right. Pulped, popped color douche master. Popped color douche master. Anthony Garo, you magnificent bastard. Fight. Now, remember, this is the company that after the distillery in New Zealand went, went upside down, bankrupt, they bought all the whiskey stocks and right. then started sitting on them and doing interesting things with okay. them. It's called the New Zealand Whiskey Connection. Wow. Collection. Oh, that's why I keep doing interesting whiskeys. I just want to camp out here and we have to get Oh, to this one's lovely. So, whoa. This is weird as shit, but it beautiful. Is. What is that nose? This is uh, six years in bourbon cask, finished for 10 years in French oak wine casks. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So, Okay. Ten years in French wine. Look yeah. at the color. Yeah, 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 it yeah. is red almost. That's, that's like a tawny port. Yes. That's where we're getting these notes. Ten years in French Ten oak years. wine cask. The usually finishing, right, is gonna be you know just uh, small very small end of time. This sucker was aged in a funky barrel. And Man, you can is... tell, you can absolutely tell. It totally changed the nature of this whiskey. Do you like almond rocas? It's a candy that has the toffee middle and then the little crumbled nut outside in chocolate. They're in little, they look like little I don't eat candy rabbit enough. turds. I don't eat candy enough to know. Okay, so Almond Roca is one of the only candies I really kind of, I used to get it in the Costco size 10s. Okay, so. And it I'm reminds saying, me of Almond Roca. I'm saying there's a dark chocolate, maybe this is an Almond Roca, I don't know, but there's a dark chocolate. There's a, there is a bit of nuttiness in there. I don't know if I would characterize it as almond, but, and then as a dark chocolate, almost a Dense maraschino cherry. But it's creamy. Dense maraschino cherry, a dark chocolate, and some some. Kind oh, this of, is so good. Some kind of nuttiness. Wow, and then. So the last one you get. There's this spike of almost. It's like a essence of a fruit. It's like a fruit extract. What is this? Yeah. It's like a a raspberry strawberry fruit extract. It's a, it's got the slight bitterness tartness of yeah, a like raspberry. Yeah, like an extract where it's so condensed, you don't just get like these natural fruity flavors. It might almost be kind of prune-y on the taste, too. Mm. So, at this point, I think it's closer to wine than whiskey. Yeah. Closer to wine than it's whiskey. It's good, but we gotta move on. Okay. That one, that's a damn good whiskey, man. Yeah. We're moving on to four-finger rye whiskey. Now, what happened to the fifth finger? I am gonna give these guys a little bit of shit. Which finger? I have no idea. Well, you know the actual story? The guy, when he was making this whiskey, lost a finger. Oh. So they called it Four Finger Whiskey. This, this is 1205 Distillery. All right, there you go. Hey, there it is. There it is. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, so Good on you for working your ass off and making a whiskey and losing a finger to it. <laughs> but, and this is from Brian Doherty, by the way. Brian Doherty, you may give us it. Bastard. Fine. This is all that pine sap note in the nose. So pine sap, not so so strong. It goes back to the, all the way to wiggle. I'm gonna say this is a rye whiskey. I'm gonna say because I've always tried to say like a really young raw leather. I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak mine a little bit. A vegetal young leather. Yeah, and this vegetal is, young leather. You say green tree sap. There's a perfumey dent, like an over perfumed density to the nose. Yeah, like when someone, an old lady, has worn too much perfume, and it's and that, it mixed with powder, like baby powder. And it's that note <laughs> that it's not. Neither one of our favorites. Kind of chalky. And you really only find it in craft. Mm -hmm. But there's people out there that like that note, and you got a lot of good options. Along with that vegetal young leather, your green tree sap. Yeah. You get this. Um, Condensed astringent tea tea bag element squeezed tea bag that bitterness almost from apple. there almost apple but also there's the almost a hot brown sugar even though I think it's a relatively small is there a bucket down there no you keep pouring on the rug this rug is from 1567 it's not it's not from 1567 1790 I don't like that one uh, because it ticked every single box of 
the whiskeys that I don't like. Okay, these two bottles are from Declan Kaneski. Declan Kaneski, you magnificent. Bastard. Oh. <laughs> Gotta have the label. Though. Now, on the other hand, okay, we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna get new glasses and we can try them together because I want you to experience this. This is the new make followed by the same thing oh, aged. Oh, lovely. How cool is that? Yeah. Okay, now here's what I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell you that I may read a whole section of the homepage of their website because okay. it's the best thing. I wish that I had written it myself because it's so good. It's Minnesota whiskey. I wish I had written it because it's the kind of marketing copy that we teach our students oh, to write. He said a thing. Yeah, it's really hard to read. He actually said at the end of his note, uh, if you read that on air, type it out first because Rex won't be able to read it. I'll try. You want to try? <laughs> no, 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 no. I can try. No, don't try. Declan. You're great. But I really do want to try the new make, followed by the aged. Yeah. And then we'll end with a little story time. How old is the age? Four months. Four, That's oh. it. Just four months. Whoa, four months did that? Whoa, that is straight up new make, man. That is like banana funk baby sick. Yeah, you know the bit of the, the brown spot on the banana? Mm -hmm. It's the brown spot on the banana. And you can still smell it in the four month old. Well, it's only four months. Yeah. I mean, it's still the dominant well, nose. Oh, hold on. What's surprising? Holy cow, What's the wood. Yes. What's surprising is how much it changes, yeah. even in just four months. Yeah. Even in just four months. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow, there's this weird, weird chocolate note that just exploded at the back third of this new make. Huh. You see what I mean? It's a nice new make. And then it went away. Here's what I will tell you. I like that of all the new makes I've ever tried. It's a 43% new make. On this show. Yeah. Not ever, but on the show. Of all the new makes I've tried on the show in a bottle. Yeah. This one tastes the most like what I've tasted actually coming off of stills oh, at distilleries. Yeah. As opposed to like the bottled pretty version or the sure. proof down version. That's or, always fun. It's coming yeah. right. You can see the hose coming off the still. It's always hot or warm. This is the closest to tasting like real right off the still new make. If you want to see what that tastes like, if you can get your hands on that, you'll see. And then you well, immediately get to tell what wood does. Yes, but this has also been proved down, 43%. Mm -hmm. That new make off the still is, you know, obviously the strength they put into casks. Oh, it's surprisingly woody for being only four months. Right. It's all the characteristics of the new make with a little bit of dry, sanded down wood sawdust mixed with, um, I think, like a chocolate, a black, bitter chocolate. I'm surprised, let me see this, as different, I'm saying, you're saying you're finding some things, some commonalities. Yeah. I'm struggling to find commonalities, and I'm surprised at how different this is even after just four months. Four months. Yeah. I can find vaguely, vaguely on the finish, I can find that um, really ripe banana. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, after four freaking months, come on, are we sure? Actually, I kind of like the new make. Really? Better than the four. Are we sure this is just four months? Look in the back. Aged four months. All right. Okay, so I went to their website, as I always do, and they do say, hey, this is not our story, but we're going to tell you the story of Minnesota distilling. Caramel? Keep saying words. You're gonna no, no. You're going to like this. You I'm like, yeah, I can do multitasking. Go ahead. No, you can't. Most people don't know that farmers in central Minnesota made the best, most highly coveted moonshine whiskey of prohibition. Mm -hmm. And the man who helped them do it wasn't a mobster. He was a monk named Brother Justice. Prohibition coincided with a mini depression yeah. in Minnesota. A lot of farmers turned to moonshining out of necessity. Grain prices were in the ditch. Families suffered. They needed money to put food on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, Hard-working German Catholics, the farmers knew how to brew beer, but they lacked the knowledge and equipment to distill beer into pure, high-quality whiskey. Right. Monks at a nearby monastery came to their aid. Mm -hmm. They explained that whiskey was illegal, but as it was a gift from God, mm -hmm. not immoral. Huh. I like those monks. Yeah. One monk went even further. He believed that the farmers had the right to make whiskey and they had the, he, the responsibility to make it right. They just needed training and mm -hmm. the right tools. Yeah. So he scavenged the abbey for copper and metal right. and he built customized stools and uh, stills and took them and taught them how to use it. 
<laughs> right? He taught them how to make cuts. He taught them how to use barrels for aging for best flavor. And uh, with the still, the stills, the monks gave them and the skills they taught them. Minnesota farmers made one of the only branded moonshines during Prohibition. Right. An illegal whiskey actually branded. Yeah, yeah. Right? It was, he was a Minnesota Robin Hood. <laughs> Friar Tuck, uh -huh. Johnny Appleseed, all in one. His name was Brother Justice. Right. That's good. The patron saint he of is, their distillery. He is whiskey, Brother Justice. Whiskey Justice. <laughs> uh, so, this, I will say, it's four months. It's relatively simple. It hasn't had a lot of time to develop yet. But what's surprising is the. It's not a sugary caramel, it's like a dry caramel with that wood note in four months that shows up for me in spades. Mm hmm. Damn interesting, that comparison. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.